today with uh, four-time world champ, bareback rider Bobby Moat, team roper extraordinaire. Uh, you just got back from the NFR, and uh, tell us a little bit about your NFR, how, how it went. All in all, it was a pretty, it was a pretty good week. Uh, ended up third in the average, third in the world. Fell a little short of what I came there to do, but it got a slow start. Really, the first four rounds I placed once or twice, but it had a couple low scores that cost me quite a bit in the average. Right. So, and then after that, I placed pretty much every day. And got some. Didn't end up winning any rounds, but ended up winning like eighty-nine thousand. So it was it was good still. Good week. You know, mm -hmm. That's uh, better than working for a living anyway. Yeah, yeah, definitely better than working for a living. And I felt good when I was done. I was ready for ten more. Right. So uh, talking about feeling good, tell me a little bit about bareback riding and what you got to do to, uh, I mean, I know everything about staying mentally focused and about uh, what you got to do to be a team roper, but a little bit different being a bareback rider. Tell me a little bit about what you what you do on a daily regimen or how you prepare for that. Well, your physical preparation is important. Uh, uh, you know, the older I get, the more important it is that I, that I do keep up on my physical preparation. This is the first year. I've worked as hard as I have as far as staying in shape, uh, getting stronger and, and working at it than I have in the past. This is consequently also the first year I've been hurt. Uh, you know, the last five or six years I've had some fairly major injury every year that hasn't kept me from going to the finals, but it sure, you know, held me back some. So it's, you know, it's nice to be able to be in shape and feel good and, and you know, after the week is over still be, you know, in one piece. and not having to go home and rehab anything and so uh, you know I can see where the physical preparation paid off obviously the mental aspect of competition doesn't vary much from roping to bareback riding you just have to focus and concentrate and you know your confidence is based on your preparation so a lot a lot of the similarities there now uh, just because I know a little bit of the story <clears throat> um, uh, one thing I think that's interesting to me is a lot of times people have just instant success or whatever and in your bareback riding I've heard a story about when you started bareback riding just give a little bit of detail on uh, how you got started and how good you were when you started and then your your journey I mean not not long time but just how your journey started. Well I started when I was 15 and uh, didn't show probably any promise to anybody wanted to do it uh, you know wasn't athletic by no means was I wore, I think, when I started riding bareback horses, I think I wore 28, 36 slim Wranglers. So that would give you some idea how how big, built. Uh, yeah, big, big style guy. So, <laughs> uh, and really uncoordinated to, to boot. So it, it, it took me a long time to where it started to click. And then I bought my permit, of course, as soon as I was 18, but had no business being there other than I knew that that's where all the best guys were. Right. And I didn't want to be, uh, you know, anything other than that. So. Uh, got around the best guys and rodeoed until the first year that I actually did very good, like really won much money to speak of was 2000. So I rodeoed for a while before I had any any success at it. And what about uh, who did you uh, uh, imitate your style after or whatever? I, I got an idea of who you look like, but I don't know who you. Yeah, when I when I was like. starting the. Uh, the best bareback rider in that era was Clint Corey. He'd made the finals 18 times and won a world title and was up in the Northwest where I grew up. And so I saw him, I'd been to his schools and, and I knew that, you know, that was a, a good style and a style, you know, he's not a big stout guy either. And he had more longevity than most any other bareback rider in history. And so I decided to kind of try to pattern myself after him. And then in uh, 2000, I started traveling with him. That's when I first started doing good, and uh, kind of just, you know, uh, iron sharpens iron, so they say, and got around the winners and, and learned, probably learned more from them driving all night in the middle of the night than I did, you know, at the rodeos. Right. We'd talk it over, and, you know, he's a, he's a winner and yeah. knows what goes in. And I've always been interested to know why people win. You right. know, I didn't want to be one of those guys that, uh, that was just, had it one day and didn't the next. Right. I didn't know where it went. Right. Well, that was who I had in mind, and I we hadn't even talked about this. But I, if you had to tell, if I had to say, I was going to think in Clint Corey because he rode so uh, to me perfect and upright and really kept his balance good, and he wasn't one of the 
lean back and all over the horses style that was back back then there was quite a few guys that did that but he was always real upright and uh, and just pretty to watch ride and so and to me that's the same thing with you I, I enjoy watching your style of riding um, now uh, next thing people don't know about you probably is that uh, you uh, probably would rather be a team roper and make the finals team roping than bareback riding and uh, you've really come a long ways and worked on your team roping for the last shoot I don't know how many years but I've seen you escalate 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 and you keep getting better and you work at it as hard as anybody I know and uh, so tell us a little bit about the team roping and uh, kind of where your aspirations are and what you want to do with that. Uh, you know I've been trying to learn how to get better at heading while having a full-time rodeo career and so my, you know, I've been trying to play catch up. I've been roping for a little over 10 years now, but taking it really seriously for the last probably six. And uh, and I haven't, you know, as far as competing in the rodeos, I haven't really got the opportunity to go duck off and, and work my way up through the ranks like uh, like a lot of guys do because I'm only at the biggest rodeos. And so same deal as the bareback riding. I knew, I know that's where the best guys are. And, you know, when I don't win, I've, surely learn something and take some experience from it to the next one. So um, fortunately I have a pretty good career in the bareback riding that's allowed me financially to do that. But uh, you know as expensive as it is, a uh, guy doesn't want to be doesn't want to be out there taking those lickings too long. So uh, I've been working at it, I've been working at improving my horse herd, which is really important, more more important, you know, I've noticed all the time, you know, the best guys in the world that can handle their ropes the best still have to have the best horses to win, or they might as well stay home. <clears throat> so yeah. I'm at a deficit of, comp, you know, competing, and my rope handling is not the greatest, and so I really need to have good horses. And so I've been trying to improve that area a lot. Been uh, improving my partner area. I've got Trey Johnson. He's going to rope with me all this year, and so I'm excited about that. He's got the same goals as I do. Works at it hard and one of the best guys to be around you could ever find. Right. Well, and it's been fun to watch your uh, your work ethic, and uh, it seems like you bring your work ethic, work ethic that you have from the bareback riding into the team roping, and you can just see your dedication and your your uh, desire to get better and better, and, and it's been neat to see your uh, roping escalate as well. And now uh, you just moved from Oregon to Stephenville, and you've got a family of four three, kids? Three, three kids. kids, yeah. Yeah, yeah, three kids, 11, 9, and 5, and uh, we moved down here, you know, for the rodeo and for the rope. Right. Um, it's hard to travel with your family, and I've traveled with them as much as we could in the past, but now my oldest, Charlie's in middle school and has more than one teacher, and they're not going for him just being in and out of school, and, and frankly, I'd rather be down here. The weather's better uh, for more of the year, and you get to go compete against the best guys going. Right on a weekly basis and so if I was to stay in the Northwest and try to uh, realistically give Team Roping a shot I'd probably be kidding myself because yeah. the only time I get a chance to compete is when the best guys show up in the Northwest for about two months and uh, that's the toughest time of the year to win that there is and right. so it, it, it'd be pretty uh, pretty discouraging you know down here you get to go jackpot against all the best guys every week and practice competing and get better and so you know, I see if there's any way to get on the fast track to getting better be, as being a better header. I need to be down here. Yeah. Well, and that's what a lot of people don't realize that uh, Stephenville has become the the uh, mecca, I guess, of team roping. I mean, good lord, every almost every NFR guy lives down here, and so you really get to not only be around great ropers but compete against them. And and if you want to see what you've got. You can, you can go to the weekly jackpot around yeah. here and you can see exactly what you got. Yeah. Sometimes that's good, sometimes that's bad. You can go broke doing mm -hmm. it too, but uh, but it definitely gives you a realistic picture instead of having, uh, you know, you go to the weekly jackpot other places and you just beat them up and you think, man, I'm ready, and then you show up at the rodeos and yeah. way off the mark. So uh, yeah. that is a neat thing about here. Um, all right, well, I appreciate you coming on, and yep. uh, good luck next year. We look forward to seeing you there in two right. events one of these days. All right, thanks for having me.